Good afternoon. I'm Senator Gary Daniels from District 11. Today we'll be holding a meeting of the Senate Finance Committee. Before we get started, I'll, I'll read through a checklist to ensure that the meeting we are holding is in compliance with the right to know law. As chair of the Senate Finance Committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04 and its extensions, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. In accordance with the emergency order, I'm confirming that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possible by video and other electronic means. We are utilizing Zoom for this electronic meeting. All members of the public and selected legislative staff have the ability to communicate contemporaneously in this meeting through this platform. And the public has access to contemporaneously watch and or listen to the meeting on Zoom or YouTube and via phone by following the directions and links provided on the general court website. We have provided public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting in the Senate calendar. We are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anyone has a problem, please email remotesenate at leg.state.nh.us or call 603-271-6931. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, it will be adjourned and rescheduled. Please note that all votes taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Finally, let's start the meeting by taking roll call attendance. When each member states his or her presence, please also state where you are and if anyone else is in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. I will call roll. Senator Morse. Senator, Senator Hennessy. Senator Hennessy. Good afternoon, Aaron Hennessy from Littleton Senate Chamber. Senator D'Alessandro. Senator Reagan. Present. Senator Guida. Senator Bob Guida from Warren, District 2 present in the chamber. Senator Rosenwald. Cindy Rosenwald from District 13, Nashua in the Senate chamber. And I'm Chair, Chair Senator Gary Daniels. I'm in the Senate chambers uh, along with uh, our committee assistant and actually some staff and a couple of members from uh, legislative budget assistants. Um, with that, I'll invite you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Our first presentation today is with the Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. Good afternoon, Sarah. Good afternoon. Thank you for um, holding this uh, via Zoom today. Um, we are here. I'm with my um, my uh, staff here, ready to answer questions. Um, we have, I think, two small changes from what we um, were um, happy with coming out of the House and from the governor's budget. And um, if you would like us to walk through those two things, we can. Otherwise, we're happy to just answer questions um, as I know you have a lot to tackle today. Uh, are, they, are they part of the um, recap sheet that we're looking at or are they something different? Um, Chris Marino, if you would unmute and just help us determine which document we should be looking at. 
yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, these items that you have listed on are currently are correct. Uh, however, there was one additional item that we sent yesterday uh, for additional review. I don't see on this list. I'm not sure if it made it uh, into your hands. <clears throat> um, if, if necessary, we can go ahead and, and send that to you. Um, yeah, uh, I don't, I don't know that we have received it. I'll tell you what, why, why don't we just start going through the, uh, uh, the recap sheet and um, if you, if we hit an area where you've got a change to it, uh, bring that up at that time. Uh, otherwise, if it's something that's not on the sheet, you can bring it up before we close out. Very well. Great. Um, Chris, I'll let you walk through this because you are the best at that. Okay. Very good. Uh, so what we have, uh, looking at the sheets, the first one, number one, uh, DHR Office of Preservation. In this situation, what we're looking to do is actually turn a part-time class 50 position into a full-time position. Uh, we have, we're, we, uh, we, the money coming in for 22-23, it appears, is going to be a bit more than what we received in the past. These are federal funds. And uh, in order to receive the full amount, we need to increase our ability to match those funds. So what we're, what we're seeking to do is to increase the amount of uh, general fund dollars that will serve two purposes. One, to add the additional labor uh, necessary to help uh, continue to administer the increased uh, size of the program, but also to give us the additional match we need to leverage, uh, maximize the uh, dollars that are coming in from the federal funds. Uh, number two is just a request to establish some additional federal revenue. Before, before you go on, Chris, we do oh, have a qu question from Senator Guida. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chris, my question is, we provide these general funds above what was requested. Can you quantify how much additional federal money will be coming as a result? Yes, the intent here is to match, uh, I believe the mix is a 60-40 match. So by matching 40% general funds, we will receive 60% federal funds. So with the total being uh, $34,000 a year, we are hoping to see a figure close to $50,000 in additional federal funds. What, what is the possibility that you could find that money within the budget uh, that was passed by the House? I mean, your, your budget is up uh, over 14% in the last four years, where C CPI and population growth shows about 4.3%. Okay. Uh, well, I'm not entirely sure I could answer that question off the top of my head. I think we'd have to go back through and... and and, and look seriously at, at what's uh, what we have. I know right now we're, you know, we were given some pretty aggressive targets and I think we've been able to meet those targets. Uh, but with the influx of additional federal funds coming in, um, we felt it was prudent to, to, you know, seek those additional funds in order to leverage that, that advantage with the additional federal funds. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, that's a position we have right now. Um, I'm not sure there would be much opportunity to seek those additional funds at this time, um, but I could certainly uh, get back to you and, and see what we could come up with. Okay, thank you. Follow up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Chris, what is the added scope of work that the money would provide for? It would be an expansion of support for the uh, work that is done in the Division of Historical Resources. This is a preservation work primarily. Um, it, but uh, I would have to, if you would like a detailed uh, uh, list of what that is, um, I could have that information sent to you. I know that- Is Ben, is ben Wilson on the, on the call right now? Ben, if you're on, is it something you, you could speak to directly? Ben serves as the director for the Division of Historical Resources. 
services, and this would take a part-time position, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, to a full-time position to support programs like the Historical Highway Marker Program and other, um, and other statewide programs that the division is uh, required to fulfill. And we haven't um, been able to get back to pre-2009 for that position. Um, I see Ben now. Is there something there I forgot? Um, uh, yes, yeah, Senator Guy, it's a great question. Uh, currently, um, the position as a part-time position is really doing more than what a full-time, what the full-time position um, uh, does. And this person is responsible for all of our community outreach, for our Moose Plate grant program, for educational programs with students. Um, it also um, would be taking on the high historic highway marker program, uh, which is uh, which when the position was lost back in 2009, that was position that program was moved to our survey and national register uh, position. Um, that position is also overworked due to other programs that have been uh, dumped on. Her. So um, this, this uh, is a critical uh, position within the department. Um, we still have three open full-time unfunded positions that were lost back in 2009. The division has not uh, gained any positions back except for this, uh, what is now a part-time position and what we're hoping to uh, make a uh, get back to a full-time position. And the guy to follow up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, if we were to fund this, uh, would you be willing to give up the three positions that have been vacant for twelve years? Uh, Any or all of them? <laughs> uh, that's that's a that's a tough question, Senator. A good question. Uh, one of those positions is another position that we're hoping to restore in the next biennium, which is the state curator's position. Currently the state does not have a state curator. So there is nobody right now looking after all of the state historic resources, collections that you see in the state house, um, in the secretary of state's office, at all the various historic sites um, and archives. Um, right now, uh, each department is trying to do their best to take care of these uh, precious New Hampshire items and um, so so at least that one position I certainly would not want to give up on. Further questions? The other two positions? Uh, well this uh, the position that we're asking for uh, would be one of those positions and then the other is the state architectural uh, historian uh, which was a position that was held by uh, uh, Mr. Jim Garvin who I believe you know um, and uh, that position has also um, uh, not been filled, and I would hope that someday we'd be able to fill uh, that position again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any further questions? Seeing none, please continue. Right, continuing on uh, to item number two, uh, state fire assistance. Uh, this is a simple request to uh, budget some temp labor um, based on some additional federal funds that we have determined we'll be receiving uh, going into the new biennium, we'd like to get them budgeted. Uh, I believe the purpose of the labor will be to uh, uh, steward the fire towers um, that, are, that are out there right now. Um, so this is just federal funds uh, that we happen to have uh, extra on hand and we would like to get those uh, appropriated. Senator Morse. Yeah, um, I don't know if this is a question for LBA or the department, but two, three, and four, can they come in through fiscal? Yes, they could. Further questions? Seeing none, please continue. Uh, number three. And number four are uh, the additional appropriation of funds from the Connecticut Lake Headwaters uh, Trust Fund 
uh, for the purpose of stewardship endowment in one case and maintenance in the other case. Uh, again, both trust funds, uh, we see a significant increase in the need for some additional maintenance and other stewardship uh, work. The trust funds have significant balances at this time. And uh, we, have just, we have recently decided that it would be prudent to go ahead and try and appropriate a significant amount uh, to that end. So we would like to add these two items to the, to the list of the budget. Questions? Seeing none. Next. Anything further? Question from the department. Is there any further presentation? My apologies, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, moving on to number five, the HB2. Uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, Senator Morse. The number five and number, well, the, it's not number six, but what's under it, um, we're going to be taking up in rescue funds. So I'd recommend number five be removed from the back of the budget. And Wellington, Kingston, and White Lake, I believe, are being taken up. Fort Stark and Ragged Neck, I couldn't find, but um, the intention is to do those in rescue funds. So I would, I would move on number five to remove it from the back of the budget. And there's a motion by Senator Morse to remove uh, what we call number five, uh, which, which is the Jericho Mountain Hampton RV and uh, the, well, I'll call it section six, uh, which is Fort Stark, Wellington, Kingston, White Lake, Ragged Neck. I don't think you have to do anything with section six, Mr. Chairman. You don't have to do anything with that? No. Okay. Oh, okay, so we're just gonna remove uh, section 141 and it's seconded by Senator Guida. Any discussion on that? Senator Rosenwald. Thank you, just a question. Um, I, I just got the fiscal agenda this morning, and so I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but is number five on the agenda for next week? No, it, what we're doing is the federal government put out their analysis on Monday of this week. Um, the, are you talking about rescue money now? Because right. what the state would like to do on the 21st is re receive the money because we should have it by the 18th. Um, that's coming from the federal government. And then those projects that are ready that we can get in, onto the agenda on the 21st, we'd get on. Um, but I don't think there's that kind of hurry um, to do it. We're just trying to draft a plan to how to spend it, but these are definitely on the plan. So I guess with more of a, a kind of a process question, are the agencies coming to fiscal with Yes. Proposals to yes. spend the rescue. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Not on their own. It's well, being, I'm sure they're getting the governor some has direction. a committee that's been working for six weeks on putting together plans, and the departments will definitely mm -hmm. come in as as we understand the guidance. The guidance was very late, so. Just one last one. This the committee that you mentioned. What is the name of that and who who are the members? It's the governor who asked several people to come in and start to review this six weeks ago and they've been reviewing it. And they're basically, as of Monday of this week, they got guidance from the federal government of what can be done and what can't be done. It's a 150 some page document. So it obviously has taken about, it's gonna take another couple of days to get a report back, but. Thank you. Senator D'Alessandro. Just to follow up on Senator Roosevelt's question. So is, is, there a, is there a group in place at the, at the present time that's, that's meeting on a periodic basis to go over all of these, all, all of these items that are being brought forth and, and where are they being brought forth from? Are the departments doing it or have they been given a, a request 
No, I don't think there's been a request of the departments at all because it's water, sewer, broadband are basically what the federal government told New Hampshire are the main categories. The okay. only non-main category is replacement funds, right. um, which the replacement fund document from the federal government is far different than what the state of New Hampshire thought. It, it has to be taken over the whole government to look at what funds didn't come in whether it's uh, tolls didn't come in or I don't know, pick a whole bunch of them. Right. There's a whole bunch of revenues that had to be looked at in a year, not in the, not in the state's year. So let's just say it's 2020. It had to be reviewed in that category. That has not been done yet, but that'll get, that'll free up some money that you can do a lot of different things. Um, so let's say the state of New Hampshire is getting 500 million up front because New Hampshire has been very good about unemployment. So we get penalized. So instead of getting a billion dollars or 994 million from the federal government in that one bucket, and there's a lot of buckets coming to New Hampshire. Um, so the first half is coming on the 18 already been applied for um, really Water, sewer, broadband fall into a category easily on the 500 million. The, we believe there's over 100 million of shortfalls, but we don't, we don't have a definition on it yet. That could go to replace budget money. Um, so that would be a different story. That could be used for different things. But one further question, Mr. Chair. Follow up. So we had, we had capital budget this morning <clears throat> and uh, majority leader mentioned that the, there's a list being compiled of items in the capital budget that might be removed and taken care of by these funds. Is that is that part of the deal also? Yeah, there's actually two funds that fall into play here. Um, you guys on Ways and Means are studying, and I've talked to Bob enough times about this, where the revenues might come in 2021, which is one set of funds that I think come into play in the budget. And then there's rescue funds. And I think the only rescue funds that would be considered are that revenue loss right now. I think fiscal is not gonna be able to take up $500 million worth of requests in the month of May. I, I just don't think it's responsible. And so I, th I think there'll be things that fall into June, July, August, and, and all throughout the year next year. But I can tell you the guidance from the federal government is ridiculous in the sense that we have 500 million coming and then all of a sudden we find out we have 120 million in broadband this week. We had already planned on using 68 million in broadband money. Um, and I think everybody was prepared for it. We studied the federal government what they've already done with some of our companies in New Hampshire on broadband. And then we find another 120 million this week. I mean, it's a nice problem to have, but I think we have to be responsible and that's a bigger deal. And so there's actually three things going on right now. It, and that's why I don't think they get mixed. You have the budget going on and what we can remove from the budget. I will tell you as we go along and I, I guess Jeb must have talked about it in capital budget, but that was only so that if you guys had other projects you wanted to put in, maybe we freed up a little money for you. I don't know. I mean, it, John asked me that question the other day, and I'm not that burst on it that, you know, if we freed up 10 million in the capital budget and you had further requests, right. it gave you some room. Right. So um, that's, but I'm just telling you, I know these items are on the rescue sheet. There's probably 15 to 20 million dollars worth of investment into cultural resources that we believe we could do up front. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I got the picture. You all set? Yes, thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Any further questions? Seeing none. We have a motion on the floor to. Uh, remove section five, uh, section five, or excuse me, number five, section 141 of House Bill 2. And that has been seconded by Senator Guida. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll call roll. Senator Morse. 
Yes. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Reagan? Yes. Senator Guida? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. And the chair votes yes. And section 141 has been removed. Mr. Chairman. Senator Morse. Wow. Yeah, you... I would move to remove sections two, three, and four. Uh, not because they're not necessary, but I think I'd prefer to have them come in fiscal rather than stay through the budget. Second. Okay, there's a motion by second. Motion by Senator Guider, seconded by Senator Morse to remove sections two, three, and four with the intent of having them come in through fiscal. Any discussion? Senator Rosenwald? Do we have to remove them? I thought they weren't in the budget yet. I'm I'm sorry, I'm just confused by that. I actually I don't think they are in the budget. I thought the agency was my, requesting my, they be added. It's my understanding that, that everything on, on here above those sections at the bottom, these are extras that were not included in the house budget. So the only reason we would need to take action on them is if we wanted to put them in. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, the okay, so we section. don't need to remove them, we would have to add them. Right. Say that again. That's correct. We would have to add them. They would have to be added. We don't need to remove them. If if you wanted to add them to the budget, is that what you're? Okay, but the motion that was made is. But I and I think I think Senator Guider is withdrawing his motion. Oh, okay. No, you don't have to. Okay, so so it's not in the budget now. Right. By by removing his motion, they will stay outside of the budget, and therefore we can deal them with them coming in through fiscal. Okay, is there any other action that needs to be taken in regard to the Department of Natural and Cultural Resources? Seeing none, we will thank the department uh, for being here to assist us this afternoon. Was, it, was there anything else? Uh, yeah, actually, Mr. Chairman, I, I was just trying to find it. I had submitted one additional request to uh, to the yesterday, I, I'm, I'm sorry you did not receive it. It was a it was a request essentially. We have uh, several vacant uh, unfunded positions in the 22-23 budget, but one of the positions we have we would like to actually uh, fund. Um, so what we're doing is transferring sufficient amount of appropriations from other classes uh, to, to fund that vacant position. So it's a net effect of zero on the budget, no change to our overall budget. Um, unfortunately, you don't have the details in front of you here, um, but we can provide those details. Um, and I, yeah. I guess Deb Martone should have a copy of that. I know I, I sent to her, um, but I didn't want to lose the opportunity to, to, to uh, yeah, if you could if you could send that to Deb again, and uh, sure. she'll make sure that it gets uh, distributed to members. I will do that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator uh, D'Alessandro. Mr. Chairman, did we take any action on, on item one? There was no motion to take any action on item one. Thank you. Okay, Any, anything else from the department? Mr. Chair? Yes. So by not taking an action on number one, does that mean that we were denied that request? That's what that would mean. At least for now. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Going on to the Department of Business and Economic Affairs. Oh, okay. Um, we had some carryover from yesterday, right? <clears throat> so it is uh, going, going back one moment to a natural and cultural resources. There is a motion. Is there a motion to accept the uh, the figures of the house uh, with the with the amendment of taking off section one forty one? I would move it. 
Moved by Senator Guido, is a second? second? Second by Senator Reagan. Discussion? There being none, we'll call roll. Senator Morse? Yes. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Reagan? Yes. Senator Guida? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Thank you. Uh, now we'll go on to business and economic affairs. Senator Hennessy. Thank you. I move lines three and four. Senator Hennessy moves uh, items. <coughs> you say lines three and four? Mm -hmm. Second. Um, I'm not sure if I. Okay. You looking under the HB1 agency request? Uh, I'm I'm at a loss as to which one three and four is because I mean we've got uh, changes in uh, House Bill One that they talk about uh, uh, economic development and there's a small business development center, travel and tourism. So I'm looking at those as two and three. I got I got SBDC ninety thousand dollar increase is three. And then promotional marketing, a $400,000 increase in total is four. That's what's on our sheets. Okay. Okay, so uh, Senator Hennessy moves yeah, I've got the new one now. No, I've got too many updates. Uh, okay, so Senator Hennessy uh, is moving items uh, three and four. That is the Small Business Development Center and uh, Promotional Marketing. Um, Senator Hennessy, you want to just clar clarify that what's happening with each of those? Sure. So line three, the $90,000 will, will, will bring the SBDC to their typical annual funding of, what is it, 315,000. And line four will restore the funds that the house took out of class 69 accounting unit 2013 in order to fund the SBDC to the level that they funded it at. Okay. And that, that was the department of uh, uh, tourism and tourism and travel, I believe was the line that, that they took that out of. Is that correct? Yes. Or is that actually number five? No, five no. would be an additional spend. Okay. Four was what the governor had, yeah. brings it back to the governor's approved number. Okay. So it puts 175,000 back into travel and tourism on one and adds 90,000 to uh, uh, SBDC to bring them up to 315. Okay, so that is motion by Senator Hennessy. Is there a second? second? Second by Senator Reagan. Discussion? Senator Rosenwald? Thank you. I wonder if we could um, clarify with the department on the SBDC, because it seems to me that this motion will still um, incur a $250,000 cut 
to that agency across the biennium from the current funding levels. We've gotten a lot of email from businesses across the state. Just looking at what the Nashua Chamber of Commerce sent me there, um, that agency supports over 7,000 businesses, generates 166 million in total economic impact um, and leverages over another million dollars. I'm wondering, am I misunderstanding this $250,000 cut? And if not, why? Why do we want to do that? Okay. So my, my understanding is uh, that it was a $125,000 $125, difference that and that in the last budget that 125,000 was one time money. And you know I, I, I spoke to the um, the Nasher Chamber and ma made them aware of that and uh, j just let them know if we decided to fund it at something greater than 315, which it had been before, that uh, you know we were making a conscious decision to do that with something other than one time money. So it's not a $250,000 cut? I, I didn't see that. Well, I'm looking at um, the difference between number three and the amendment from Senator Reagan and myself on the next page, the difference between 430,000, which would bring them back to their current funding and 180,000 is 250,000. So I'm, I'm wondering why we justify that gap. I thought in the last budget, there was only one shot in the arm for 125,000, not two. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Senator. Maybe per year, okay. They, they only did it once though, I believe. I don't think they did. No, it I think it was I think it was two hundred thousand per year that it was budgeted at. No, not the budget. Oh, I'm talking I'm about the increase. The increase that was given to them was one hundred twenty-five thousand. Okay. But it was only given in one year. I thought though. Maybe the LBA could clarify. Mister's watching. I wonder if he'd be able to help. Oh, yeah. Taylor, can you help us out? Yeah, um, I think I've got Hallie Panetti on our on the line as well, who has the background on what you guys are talking about. I don't know if she's unmuted and can assist with this question. No, I believe the response has been correct. It was the budget was 315. It was changed to 440 for, I believe, 20 and 21, um, but it was not changed in the budget because it was a one-time thing. So the baseline number is 315. Correct. Yeah. Senator Guida. So commissioner, are you comfortable with that 215? 315. I'm sorry, 315? <laughs> yes, 315 is what we've requested. Senator Hennessy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A, a question for commissioner. Taylor, is there any, are there any funds coming into the state in any of these federal programs that could um, ultimately provide SBDC with additional monies at some point? Well, it's to, in most cases, you can't match uh, federal funding with other federal dollars. So these, these funds would have to be state um, generated in order to provide the match that they need. These, the, the funds that we uh, pass through our agency for SBDC are a, a, state, ma a state match, non-federal match uh, to a federal grant that the University of New Hampshire gets to fund the SBDC. Follow up. Follow up. And, and do, does the 315 maximize the grant? I'm sure you could probably go higher. Uh, I'd have to you know, check with the, with the SBDC themselves. Uh, but that's, I think, typically the number they've been operating at for some Thank time now. Thank you. Further questions? Okay, the mo so the motion before us, 
is the restoration of that money on items three and four. Ready for the vote? And one, right? The, the technical correction in one as well. Sorry, say that? And the technical correction in one, I think, is part of the motion, too. Well, that motion no. right now is three and four, but just I three and four? Move one. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so just on items three and four, uh, Senator Morse? Yes. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Reagan? Yes. Senator Guida? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? No. And the chair votes yes. Motion carries six to one. And Senator Morse? I'll move item number one. Sen Second. Senator Morse moves item number one, which is a technical correction. That's seconded by Senator Guida. Any discussion? There being none, call roll. Senator Morse? Yes. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? No. Senator Reagan? Yes. Senator Guida? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? No. And chair votes yes. <laughs> Motion carries five to two. Is there anything else on here that anyone wants to take up? Senator Morse. Yeah, I, while we have the department on, not I'm not supporting 6A, but 6, um, I, I don't know why the house didn't take this up. So I'd um, just like to understand that part of it. Commissioner? Um, I can't necessarily explain why the house did not include that um, we requested it um, this was as part of the department of energy uh, and the uh, split of osi the state office of planning and development is uh, under those provisions would come to bea uh, there's costs that uh, we would have to incur uh, both from um, uh, providing space for those employees that's represented here is plus a, a one-time cost of actually moving them into the space and fitting and getting that space ready for them. That's represented here. Ultimately, is, is there a cost savings in all this? Um, well, I mean, I would say it's probably a cost neutral since we're just bringing staff over from OSI into BEA. I would think that I could certainly make the case that we will leverage those uh, employees very highly in the work that we do at BEA, make full use of the planning division as part of our economic development work. It would be, it might be, might be neutral eventually, but you've got about eighty thousand dollars of relocation expenses too. That's correct, relocation, and then we do have to have extra space for them. Um, we do not have any any additional space for that number of employees in our existing space at one hundred North Main Street. So, so what would be, what would be the plan there that you would need to rent out? That that process is underway, just in anticipation of potentially this. Um, uh, coming to pass. Uh, so the uh, landlord that we currently rent from has space on the floor directly above BEA right now uh, that is adequate. Um, we've been working with the Department of Administrative Services uh, to get the cost numbers that you see here in front of you today uh, so that we can accurately represent the, what those costs would be. Okay. Any further questions? Seeing oh, Senator Morse. Yeah, I, I'd like to put six on hold until we review the energy part, but I would support section six. Um, I wouldn't support six A, but, um, and then obviously seven's in that same energy category. So um, I don't think we're gonna take, are we taking that up today? Or we're not ready for it. Yeah, it's on the list. It's on the list. Yeah, I know. It just didn't sound like you were ready for it, so I, I didn't spend any time on it. I, I support Section 6, so I don't know how you want to handle it. If you support the energy policy, which I do, um, yeah, then we can vote on it now. It's up to you. Okay. Um, with no objection, we'll put 6 on hold. Um, I'm going to uh, number 7 unless anyone wish to do anything with 6A. Um, going on to item seven, um, this uh, providing staff support for offshore wind and port development commission. I would, I would move item seven. 
I'm sorry. Seven's linked to sync six. So what if we put that on hold until we take care of six? And because we, we, we have to make a decision, make sure OSI is gonna be part of them. Okay. Uh, eight, nine, and 10. Um, anything to be taken up? Senator Rosenwald. Yes, I'd like to move item number 10 and speak to my motion. Senator Rosenwald moves item number 10. This is restoration of- well, And nine. It's and, nine and, and 10. And nine and 10. Mm -hmm. uh, which have, has to do with the Film Bureau and the Media Bureau. Bureau. Chair recognizes Senator Rosenwald. Thank you. This is, um, this is an office that's very important to the Western part of New Hampshire in particular. Um, it's been very helpful to Claremont. Since this office was opened, the Bureau has coordinated with almost 30 motion pictures and those have been shot either in whole or in part in New Hampshire in 38 different communities, especially up in the North Country. And um, there is an impact noted in Claremont from several projects of $250,000 spent locally in Claremont's businesses. I, I view this as if you eliminate the department, it's like closing your real estate office and asking the real estate to sell itself. We also heard from New Hampshire's premier filmmaker, Ken Burns. He believes that um, this gives credibility to uh, producers who are, are looking to make their films. And with this office, we can better compete with surrounding states and also Montreal for film projects. Without it, we'll be at a real disadvantage. I think one film project could easily bring in um, the $130,000 per year that we're leaving on the table. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? I would second the motion. Second by Senator D'Alessandro. Discussion, Senator Hennessy. Thank you. I have a question for the commissioner on this. Certainly. Okay. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Can you can you tell me what functions of this department you will your de your department your will be taking over, if any? So the history is uh, this uh, bureau moved to, to BEA uh, when we initiated back in 2017. Um, a lot of the function functionality that the senator spoke to are functions that um, we could handle within the division of travel and tourism development. Uh, we have not, frankly, seen um, a significant level of activity uh, in, in this space with this office in the four years that they've been uh, at BEA. Uh, and when we were looking at uh, budget um, uh, targets that we were aiming for back last year, we had a number of uh, options on the table, and this became one of them uh, just in terms of the priorities and uh, what we are uh, focusing on with the resources that we have. Uh, this was one where we felt we could make an adjustment to uh, reduce the overall spend for the department, but not necessarily uh, impact the activity that goes on um, with that industry in the state. Thank you. And thank you for recognizing that there, there might be some unneeded cost in your department. So if I, if I understood you uh, correctly, Commissioner, what you're saying is you believe that travel and tourism could pick this up at no additional cost? That's correct, Senator. Okay, thank you. Senator Rosenwald. Thank you. I just wanted to ask the Commissioner if given that for the last fiscal year and the current fiscal year, we've been in a pandemic, whether you're surprised that we haven't seen a lot of TV and film activity 
Well, no, I think obviously you know, an excellent point, Senator. The film industry has been pretty devastated over the course of the last year. Um, I would say that my experience that I described uh, predated that, but at the same token, uh, we do compete with states like Massachusetts and others that offer very significant tax credits to film major uh, productions here. Uh, the office uh, currently works with a lot of um, you know different video videographers and others that are looking for you know b-roll or looking for advertising locations. Um, that's the type of activity that the that the the bureau has been engaged in at least since they've been at BEA, which is obviously as much as I can speak to. Uh, we've not had any major like film film production inquiries, um, just frankly because uh, the, the the industry tends to go. Uh, where the where the task, tax credits are, at least uh, historically. Now, they, they, not to say that that might change going forward, but um, I certainly don't, um, don't anticipate that ultimately being all that different. So having said that, I don't mean to discount the, any of the activity that goes on in this space. Um, a lot of the work that we do in the marketing arena you know, involves a lot of this type of activity. But I think that just is one of the points that we considered uh, when we made the decision to uh, to offer this as a cut, uh, because we do have those capabilities and uh, the staff to be able to work with um, the individuals that are doing that type of work externally um, without Thank necessarily you. having the, the actual office. Any further questions? Seeing none, the motion before us is to uh, adopt items nine and 10. Uh, we'll call roll. Senator Morse? No. Senator Hennessy? No. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Reagan? No. Senator Guida? No. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. And the chair votes no. Motion fails two to five. Anything else anyone wants to take up with business and economic affairs? Mr. Chair, what, what about item eight, uh, item eight, the amendment? The amendment would uh, replace action that we took on the previous page when we uh, we did uh, as, <coughs> we, when we did item three at one number. This would increase that number. Yeah. So, so since we have ad adopted item three, uh, we are now up at. 315,000, so that's, this would move it up to 530,000. Could, could we offer an amendment that says the difference between is really the number that we're, we're looking at to restore it to the, four, the 400 that, that it had in the previous budget, which would mean that um, you, take the, you take the 180 and uh, you add to that. So you talk about $75,000. Yeah. Yes. I guess, I guess if someone wanted to move that as, a, as an amendment, they could. I'll move it. Okay, Senator Rosenwald moves uh, to, to add 75,000. Per year. Per year to the uh, Small Business Development Center. I second. That's seconded by, by Senator D'Alessandro. Discussion? Okay. Um, seeing no discussion, we'll call roll. Senator Morse? No. Senator Hennessy? Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Reagan? Yes. Senator um, Guida? No. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. And the chair will vote yes. Anything else to be taken up with business and economic affairs? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, vote four to three. Motion, motion passes. Anything else to be taken up with business and economic affairs? Senator Guida. Yes, with, with the amendments. 
Okay, Senator Garda moves the House figures with the amendments. Mr. Chair, you, you still have items on hold for um, business and economic affairs. You may want to hold on, oh, on adopting yes, their right. budget. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Motion is withdrawn. Okay, if there is no other action here, we will go on. To Department of Transportation. Good afternoon, Mr. Cast. Good afternoon. Commissioner. Okay, if you uh, if you wanted to go start walking down through the things or any any comments on the, the house, what the house approved. I recognize the department. Um, Victoria, are you, are you, do you want to run through it or do you want me to? Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me? Yes. I couldn't see my video on the screen, so I apologize. Um, uh, so we had uh, no additional items that we um, wanted to bring forward before the committee. Oh. Uh, could you unmute? There we go. I apologize. It was saying that the host has muted me. So yes. <laughs> um, Actually, I thought, go ahead. Um, so we uh, didn't have any additional um, items that we wanted to bring forward um, beyond what we presented at the uh, the first hearing. Um, However, we did um, provide a letter um, indicating that there is one a new a potential need that has arisen. Um, many of you are familiar uh, with our federal programs. And in addition to the regular apportionment or the formula funding that we get, periodically we have opportunities to compete for discretionary grant programs. Um, under the new administration, uh, there is a new program called RAISE, um, which actually um, replaces uh, the BUILD and TIGER program that you might have heard of previously. Um, it's a federal highway um, discretionary program. And uh, the first notice of funding opportunity has um, indicated that we would not be able to use toll credits to access those discretionary dollars. And so um, one of the items that we would um, like the committee to entertain is should there be um, one-time surplus, um, perhaps setting aside some funding um, so that we could access those discretionary grants if we were fortunate enough through the competitive process to be awarded uh, the dollars. Um, alternatively, this may be uh, an item that could go before the capital budget uh, committee um, but we wanted to make sure that Senate Finance was aware of the need. Um, we have looked at the, um, the notice of funding opportunity for the RAISE program, and um, we do believe we have some projects that would be strong candidates. Um, these are competitive grants, so we can't be certain that we would be awarded the dollars. Um, but what we are proposing um, is that we would have approximately $9 million available um, that would be the 20% match so we could access up to 36 million in federal funding. Uh, so this is just something we wanted to bring uh, before the committee for your consideration. Okay, um, but if I heard you correctly, then basically you, you would uh, like us to take this consideration if there are surplus funds. Surplus funds, and we'll also, as I mentioned, be bringing this before uh, the capital budget committee for their consideration as well. Okay, thank you. So that, Senator Morse. 
Mr. Chairman, that's item number 11. I would move that we fund item number 11 with 5 million in 2021 funds and um, 4 million in highway funds. Hey. Okay, Senator, Senator Morse moves uh, that, that we fund item number 11 with 5 million and I'm sorry, you said 2021 funds, which is what the commissioner was alluding to. Okay. Um, I, uh, I don't want to speak for ways and means at all, but I mean, it's pretty obvious they have some surplus in 2021. And then, and four, and 4 million in highway funds. Yes. That's seconded by Senator Guida. Discussion? Can I have those numbers again? Uh, yes, five, 5 million from 2021 surplus and 4 million from highway funds. And that would get us 36 million in federal funds. That's the main move. Right. Is the, the, the 4 million, is that also 2021? Um, I'd ask LBA to define that because we uh, we didn't define the four million. So I think the the motion would be to appropriate five million dollars of general funds in fiscal twenty one and appropriate four million dollars of highway funds in fiscal twenty one, with the expectation that uh, House Ways and Means revenue estimates may may actually have four million more than the current House um, revenue estimates that are being worked on. So there would be available highway funds to make this appropriation. Okay, thank you. So, moved. so Senator Morse moves that. The seconded by Senator Guida. Any further discussion? Just if they might, could they comment on the projects that they're they're going to pursue if if they, if indeed we get this match? Sure, Commissioner. Um, so at this time, there are two uh, notices of funding opportunity um, that are out, um, and they're soliciting project applications. Uh, one is, um, as I mentioned, the RAISE grant program. Uh, we have a, a couple of different projects that might be strong candidates. And these are competitive uh, selections. So we're trying to put forward projects that we feel will score the most point, points and therefore receive the funding. Um, so one project we're looking at as an example is the Hampton Harbor Bridge Project. Um, we think that it would be a good candidate um, and certainly if we were able to secure discretionary grant uh, funding for that project, it would free up um, other uh, federal dollars to be directed to um, other investments. Um, another project um, that we're looking at in partnership with um, the port is the uh, functional replacement work that we had planned at the port when we constructed the um, Sarah Long bridge project. Uh, there were some impacts to the port infrastructure and we are committed to um, providing a, a functional replacement um, of the facility that was previously there. Uh, but the, uh, the costs are a little higher than what we expected. So certainly a, a discretionary grant um, would help us deliver that project again without uh, taking uh, federal funding away from our other project needs. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Thank, Thank you very much, Commissioner. Sen Senator Guida. A question, uh, would these funds be non-lapsing? With it being a 21 appropriation, we would make it non-lapsing, so there'd be no year-end concern for that. Thank you. Um, and if I may, that would certainly be um, advantageous to the department. Should we not be successful with either of the grant application rounds that would be competing for now, we would anticipate future discretionary programs. And so uh, this would give us the authority to continue applying um, when there's other opportunities in the, the next two years. Okay, the mo motion on the floor is to adopt item 11. Seeing no more discussion, call roll. Senator Morse. Yes. Senator Hennessy. Yes. Senator D'Alessandro. Yes. Senator Reagan. Yes. Senator Guida? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. And the chair votes yes. The motion carries. Is there Chairman? Senator Morse. Well, while we're talking about 2021 dollars, 
Um, in all these studies we've been doing, like the last six weeks and everything, one of the things we talked to DOT about was the Conway bypass. There's a, an account that has $22 million in it right now that's been put aside um, for paying back to the federal government um, what they believe is a $29 million obligation. Um, the way it works is once we pay back the federal government, it will free up $29 million in construction in New Hampshire. Um, so line number nine, um, I would move that we use $2021 um, to put into that bucket um, of $7 million more to get to that 29 million. It's, it's a big win for the highway fund and the, uh, or whatever fund they call it. Okay, the uh, motion by Senator Morse to adopt item, item number nine. <coughs> Second by Senator Guida. And the only thing I would say, Mr. Chairman and LBA can clarify this. When we were talking to the department on this, this is not gonna get pulled off before the end of this year. So whatever language is necessary so that they can have the flexibility to negotiate with the federal government, so. Yeah. Okay. I've got that and I'll also point out the recap sheet indicates highway funds for this motion. I believe Senator Morris is referring to a general fund general funds. Uh, right. dollars in 21. So this would right. be a, a general fund appropriation. Okay. I would second it. Has been moved. Oh. Senator Guida has seconded. Uh, any further discussion? There being none, uh, we'll call roll. Senator Morse. Yes. Senator Hennessy. Yes. Senator D'Alessandro. Yes. Senator Reagan. Senator Guida. Yes. Senator Rosenwald. Yes. And the chair votes yes. Motion carries. Is there anything else on the list that anyone wants to address? Chairman, Senator Morse. I, I don't know if you want to take them all at the same time, but I, maybe not. Item number seven, I'd move yes on. I, I'm Part saying. Pass. So Senator Morse is moved, moving item, item number seven as ought to pass. Second by Senator Guida. Discussion? It's a net zero request. It's a net zero request. Yeah. I can handle that. Yes. That was the easy one. I can even handle that one. <laughs> Seeing no discussion, Senator Morse? Yes. Senator Hennessy? Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Reagan? Yes. Senator Guida? Yep. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. Chair votes yes. Motion carries. Number seven. Mr. Chairman? Senator Morse? Item number eight, I would move on to pass, and I would move to decrease the turnpike um, construction fund by that amount. Okay, so Senator Morse moves item number eight. And I'm sorry, you said to decrease? The Turnpike Construction Fund. That's where I'd fund it from. The, turn, the Turnpike Construction Fund by that amount. Yep. 350. By 350,000, yep. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Sec second by Senator Rosenwald. Discussion? There being none, Senator Morse? Yes. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Reagan? Yes. Senator Guida? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. And chair votes yes. And item number eight, Senator Morse. Item number 10, I'd like the department to explain to us. And I think we probably need to approve it, but so. Okay, chair recognizes the department on item number 10. This is reallocating funds uh, 22 to and 23 due to recently received information on federal requirements, a net zero request. So uh, when Congress passed uh, the CRISA, the supplemental COVID relief package at the end of December, um, there was 41 million uh, made available uh, for New Hampshire DOT to account for lost revenue. Um, we had included uh, that in uh, the, uh, the budget uh, presentation uh, to the House and um, 
if you recall from our presentation, uh, we were expecting to draw down that full 41 million in 2022. Um, having now received additional guidance from Federal Highway on how those dollars can be used, um, and more importantly, the reporting associated with the spending of those dollars, um, we think it would be prudent um, to change uh, how we spend and allocate those federal funds. And so we're now proposing that we would draw down um, that amount uh, in 22 and 23, uh, based on some of the elig eligibility concerns. Um, so it ends up being a, a $7 million modification from what we had planned. We'll still draw down the majority of the funds in the first year of the biennium, um, but we would spend the balance in the second year of the biennium. Other discussion? Questions? I'd move the item. Yes. Senator Morse moves item number 10. Thank you. Second by Sen Senator D'Alessandro. Yes. Discussion? Being none, Senator Morse. Yes. Senator Hennessy. Senator D'Alessandro. Yes. Senator Reagan. Yes. Senator Guida. Yes. Senator Rosenwald. Yes. Chair votes yes. Item number 10 Love is accepted. Senator Morse. Um, on the next page, page six, on the first HB2, I think Senator Hennessy has the next one, but the first HB2, um, I'd like to make an adjustment to that $19 million. Um, the $4 million in block grants to municipalities, I'd like to remove from that $19 million, um, because I believe it's going to be the intention that we send uh, block grant money back to municipalities in the range of $32 million um, in other funds. The um, other thing I'd like to delete from this is it, it <laughs> I know everybody wants to be honest, but I sit on fiscal and we, they come for winter maintenance increases every time I've ever sat on fiscal. Um, I believe that's where it should be dealt with because then we, uh, we know what's going on. So um, I would remove those two items from that HB2 item, which is section 168, which will change that down to 11 million. Okay, so Senator, What was the second one that you were removing, Senator Morse? There's two in there. One is block grants to municipalities. Yes. Well, I no. believe we're going to be able to send more than that. We're going to send it in a different fund. Yeah. And then the DOT winter maintenance fund. Um, Got it. I believe the House tried to appropriate it ahead of time. Um, I think we should go to fiscal with that one. Okay. Got it. Okay, so the motion, motion by Senator Morse is to uh, cha change the uh, section 168, amend 168 to $11 million in general funds, uh, 5 million for the highway and bridge betterment program and 6 million DOT fleet ve uh, vehicles and equipment. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second by Senator D'Alessandro. Discussion? Senator Rosenwald. Thank you. Just a question for Senator Morse. The 32 million in other funds, are those federal funds or where would we find them? It is Friday afternoon and I was up past eight o'clock. Sorry. <laughs> um, the, uh, which isn't good. Um, trying to look at my work. The uh, Josh, can you uh, tell me what bucket I took that out of? Oh, God. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good point. It's a lot of money. Sorry, Senator. The, um, that would be out of um, the revenue replacement money, um, assuming that the state 
is, and I, I believe we're fine, um, somewhere just over $100 million that's replacement money, um, I think we'd be fine doing it out of that category. That's from, I'm sorry, follow up. That, well, that's from rescue plan replacement? In rescue, I said before, our rescue is going to bring in $500 million on the 18th of this month, mm -hmm. just short of that. Mm -hmm. And out of that 500 million, about 130 million was the original calculation that we thought um, could be used as replacement money for lost funding in, in COVID. So out of that 130 million, I'm proposing we send back 32 million to the communities, um, which will have to be a separate drafted item anyways. Um, because there is some loss in money in 22 and 23 um, on, on highway funds. Got I it. think it's about $4 million, but I just, in looking at it, I think it makes total sense to send it back to our community. Thank so. you. Further question? Seeing none. The motion is the amendment on section 168. Seeing no more discussion, we'll call roll. Senator Morse? Yes. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Reagan? Yes. Senator Guida? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. And the chair votes yes. And that section is adopted. I would move Amendment 2021-1415-S on House Bill 2. Yeah. Second. <laughs> Bold move. <laughs> <laughs> so Sen Senator Guida was. I would like moved. to speak to Senator Guida's motion. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Guida moves the uh, am amendment 1415S to House Bill 2, which removes the word strictly from sections 132, page 56, line 3. Uh, this amendment also corrects the drafting format error for this section as introduced and passed by the House that was undetected to this point. Senator and <laughs> Senator Hennessy seconds. Discussion? Uh, sure. Senator Hennessy. Thank you. Uh, actually, I actually haven't seen the amendment yet, so okay. Um, so the, the word strictly, if you're looking at HB2, you won't see it on the amendment because it's it's not in the amendment, but um, because it was removed, the word strictly is um, has been brought to my attention as a concern, um, and it was I believe it was a new word. And LBA, can you confirm that? Yes. Okay. So although you can't see it now, it it should have been bold in in HB two as we received it, and what it um, what it does, and I believe that Representative Gordon has removed it from the, the bill that the Senate bill that this came from. Is that correct? Oh, okay, sorry. I, I, can't, I, I can't remember the bill number, but this did pass the Senate in, I believe it was Senate Bill 134. Um, and the House has removed that because it was passed as part of House Bill 2. So this is the only bill that this uh, section resides in at this point. So the concern with the word strictly is that it doesn't allow for any leeway. So for example, if you're driving on the highway and a plow truck smashes into you from the rear and pushes you into a guardrail, you would be strictly liable for, for replacing that guardrail, even though you were not responsible <laughs> um, you, for the damage because someone else ran into you or another car or anything. So um, this is uh, recommended by House Judiciary and um, constituents of mine. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, the motion before us is the adoption of Amendment 1415S. Senator Morse? Um, yes. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Reagan? Yes. Senator Guida? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. And Chair votes yes. And that amendment has been adopted. I did have a I did have a question on number three for the department. Uh, do we still have the program that uh, inmates can be used? 
Uh, yes, Senator, we still work with the Department of Corrections and use um, inmate labor for several functions at DOT. Was that taken into consideration with the $400,000 ask on removing graffiti? Yes. So it's gonna, it's gonna cost $400,000 in addition, but not including the labor from inmates? That's just in Salem. <laughs> um, we have in a number of locations, um, significant issues with graffiti. Um, and sometimes it's in locations that it's challenging to access uh, where it wouldn't be appropriate to use um, some of the inmate labor. Um, I'll be honest, I'm baffled at times as to how uh, the individuals who <laughs> applied the graffiti even got to these locations. And we've seen it on the back of overhead signs that span the highway, um, as well as on uh, bridge meters, um, adjacent to high-speed lanes on the interstates and divided highways. And um, so it is a, a costly um, item to address when uh, we find the graffiti in certain locations. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone, any, anything else on the, the list that anyone wishes to address? Seeing well, none. We, uh, um, a question, Mr. Senator Chairman. Senator D'Alessandro. Uh, uh, why wouldn't we address one, th one, through, uh, one through six at this point? Is, is there a problem with that? Is, well, uh, well my, my, guess, my guess, and I'm just guessing here, is that it's probably the amount of money above what has already been appropriated by the House. I mean, I'm, I, I'm inclined to not address them at this time. We'll have the opportunity later if we see that there's extra and we want to prioritize things that were left over and go back right. and address them. Uh, you know, we, we'll have that opportunity. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Good. Thank well, you for that. They're all highway funds. I mean, there's no general funds in, in, these, in these items, and they're all things that, uh, that have to be done. But I appreciate your sentiment and we'll do what you want. Is that gonna be the whole time? All week next week too? What's that? <laughs> do what he wants. He's the chairman, <laughs> he's the chairman. Mr. Chair, I defer to the chair. I was chair once. Can I get that on recording? Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, if there are no more uh, if there is no more action to be taken on transportation, we will thank the department for being with us this afternoon and uh, go on to the judicial branch. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'll, I'll move the budget as presented by the House with our adjustments. Thank you. Senator Hennessy moves the, uh, the House figures with the amendments uh, and that's seconded by Senator Guida. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. Senator Morse? Yes. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Reagan? Yes. Senator Guida? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. Can the chair votes yes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner and Bill. Thank you, Senators. Appreciate it. Have a good afternoon. Hmm? I don't know if I'm going to Chairman? Senator Morris. Are we waiting? The yeah, the department, department is now on. The chair recognizes Senator Morse. 
I, I'm prepared to move four, five, six, and seven um, at this point. Okay, Senator Morse moves items four, five, six, and seven. Second. Second by Senator Reagan. Discussion? Senator Guida. I have a question on five initially. Uh, a shortfall in projected costs. Is that something that can be brought back to fiscal if they in fact do fall short? Can we? I assume the shortfall was already far more existed. Right. What's a shortfall in projected costs? Mr. Chair? Yes. There is no provision for the judicial branch to come to fiscal to accept additional general funds. If it were federal or other, then they could. I couldn't hear you, Mike. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, there's no provision for them to accept additional general funds. If it were federal funds or other funds, then they could. Okay, thank you. Okay, everyone get that answer? So, motion before Senator Hennessy. Sorry, I just had a question. I believe when the department was here, they were, were going to give us a number to put in to decrease rental space when they moved and they may have done that in an email is there another adjustment that we should have they reduced their budget by the, the last time they were here by i think it was 150,000 wasn't it um so for number 4 when that move is done is there an adjustment for the other lease space that they're not going to use anymore. So judge, did you, did you get the question? Yeah, the, um, <clears throat> the, um, current rent obligation is $99,000. And that's paid directly by the Office of uh, Attorney Discipline. And they will be merged. Our plan is to have them merge into the Administrative Office of the Courts. So the, that expense, which is funded by the ADO, would get merged into this generally funded fund. The ADO right now is funded by an assessment on bar members. An assessment on what? Members of the New Hampshire Bar Association. Okay. So I guess we're still trying to determine what the efficiencies are going to be in terms of dollars. We are, we are saving um, the current obligation to rent the space that they're in is $18 per square foot. This will go down to $12.84 per square foot. And we are gaining uh, approximately 3,300 square feet with this transaction. That's on the real estate side. On the administrative side, we're going to be merging in their back office functions with those performed by the administrative office of the courts. They're doing it completely separately now. So we, we are going to achieve savings by consolidating uh, both the, the administration and, and the um, physical location of these entities. Okay. Further question? Yeah. So, so thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, are we not going to be receiving the, the payment that the bar members are paying for rent currently? The eight, when we anticipate that when this consolidation happens, the ADO will be reimbursing the general fund for the rent space. But we need this, um, the, it, it is the AOC that has this lease now. It is the AOC that um, can, can expand into this space and can get it fitted up. And then when the two other entities move over, they will reimburse the general fund for the, for the cost of leasing the space. OK, 
Okay, and my understanding is that there is a letter from the department in the OneDrive uh, under presentations. That's called oh, that's, that's council Ju judicial called judicial branch. Yeah. Well, actually, a judicial probably judicial branch follow up. Okay, and I think that uh, kind of spells out what the Chief Justice just told us verbally. So I'm sorry, my brain's not thinking correctly. Sorry. So what I'm looking for is the savings from moving from one location to the other and the adjustment that we need to make in the budget for not having paying rent at that other location anymore, which is already in the budget, to my understanding. So Chief Justice, do, do you have a total uh, monetary amount of savings after figuring in uh, uh, the reduction per square foot plus the amount of space and uh, the savings on the rent, uh, the, the current rent that you're, you're dropping, do you have a final figure on that? Can I, may I just consult one minute, please? Sure. And Mr. Chair, I realize that there might be some overlap in the two spaces, but. I believe there is. Yes. 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 But the, the question I think really should be: You're getting more square footage at a, at a cheap price. So is it a zero sum game, or are you no? Really it's the cost money? is going to go up. I think that's part of it that I, I'd like to know. And then the fact that uh, is the other entity going to pay, and is that money going to go directly to the general fund, or does that money go to you, and then you transmit it to the general? Fund? I, I, that's how I interpret what, what you said. Am I all wrong? The answer is it's going to be cost neutral. <clears throat> so the 126 that goes out with these general funds will be reimbursed to the general fund by these two entities. Okay, so, so it will be cost neutral. And Senator Hennessy, you had a question? So my question is for the LBA, is that cost neutral number already in a revenue someplace in the budget? No, it is not. Um, I don't know what the plan or timing is of this. They may have some time to get the space ready. I think these are annual amounts, so it won't necessarily be a full 126 in the first year. Uh, it's always difficult to plan when you're moving an organization into new space, but uh, I don't have anything on the underlying details from this. Further discussion, Senator Guida. Yeah, um, I, I thought that I heard that there was possibly something that was currently funded by association dues that's going to be picked up by the general fund. I would need to have some clarification on that. The, the Office of uh, Attorney Discipline is funded by an assessment on New Hampshire bar members. Based on that assessment, they pay rent. That arrangement will continue once this move takes place. The rent Will, the payment will be used to reimburse the general fund for this expenditure. And, and uh, what we just heard from the LBA is correct. I mean, it's not going to be immediate or one for one because we will need to fit up the space and get them moved over. Thank you. So, there, so Senator, there is no subsidization by the general fund of this function by entering into this transaction. Thank you, Chief Justice. So Senator Hennessy. hopefully this is the final question for the LBA. 
would it make sense that we had, and I know that there's timing and fit up and we don't understand what the timing is yet, but especially for 23, if there's gonna be an offsetting revenue number, wouldn't that make sense to have that in this for approval? Because right now they already have rent that's been approved in the budget. And now we're giving them more rent. If I don't believe the rent for these other organizations is in the state operating budget. Um, but if there were um, an offset to but the general funds in the second it. year, they may be able to provide us a number or an estimate that we could insert as other funds in the second year to, to reduce some of the general funds or, or all if they're up and running. Any further discussion? Um, Chief Justice, I do have uh, one, one question J just on the growth of the department. Uh, you, the department is up almost 17% in the last four years. And I was just wondering how you, you can justify that uh, based on the fact that CPI plus the population growth is about 4.3%. In, in Senator, what do you refer to? Um, I'm talking about the what uh, was appropriated in the 2018-19 budget versus what was passed by the House for 22-23. Uh, you're looking at an increase of um, $30,716,677, which is 16.9% uh, growth. Um, Senator, I, I, I'm wondering if, if we could respond in writing to that. I, I'm not comfortable doing it off on the fly, except to note that 74% of, of the branch's uh, expenditures are personnel related. And as the committee well knows, um, embedded in personnel costs are, um, is a lot, um, including um, retirement, healthcare, and so on. In terms of the net number of positions that have been added, I, I'm just not comfortable answering that off the top of my head. So I'm wondering okay. if I, if, yeah, I could, if you could, if you could submit that in writing, that'd be that'd be great. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, so we're on items. Uh, the motion for us is item four, five, six, and seven. Um, we have determined that item four is cost neutral. That uh, item, item five, you can't go before fiscal to ask for more in general funds. And any further questions? Senator Rosenwald. Thank you. It's a question to the LBA. Um, given that these replacement funds come in over time, um, but they're expected to offset the increased real estate cost, is there some kind of footnote that we could put in to the budget saying to the extent that funds come in from other sources, they are used to offset the increased space? Yes, we could put a class line or a counting unit footnote that does just that. So to the extent those funds are available, they shall be used to offset the line for rental space and identify the specific class line. Follow up. If I proposed that creation as a motion, would it have any support in this committee? Sure. 
Oh. I'd like to propose that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, there, there, there's a friendly a amendment to my four, five, six, and seven. Yes, it's a yes. very friendly amendment. So it's a friendly amendment. <laughs> Friendly amendment to uh, Senator Morse's amendment. Thank you, Senator Morse. And uh, who's, who seconded that? Was it Senator Guider? You, you're okay with the second? Okay. Any further discussion? There being none, uh, we'll call roll Senator Morse. Yes. Senator Hennessy. Yes. Senator D'Alessandro. Yes. Senator Reagan. Senator Guider. Yes. Senator Rosenwald. Yes. And the chair votes yes. And items four, five, six, and seven are adopted, and the department will be uh, sending us a letter explaining the reason for the growth. Any further action to be taken under the judicial branch? I'll move it as amended. Second. Okay, a motion by Senator Hennessy to move the House figures with amendments on the uh, judicial branch as seconded by Senator Rosenwald. Any further discussion? There being none, uh, Senator Guider. I'm concerned about the two additional circuit court judges. I realize that's a significant expense. As I recall the testimony provided by the department, there's a huge backlog of cases and that is directly affects our constituents, businesses, people, et cetera. I'm wondering if the Chief Justice or someone of the staff could address that again for this body before we vote on it, if that's permissible. Chief Justice. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Senator Guida, for the question. Uh, the, the basis for the request was um, that using the statutorily driven formula, uh, the workload for the circuit court pre-pandemic justified 45 circuit judges. In this budget, there are 35 circuit judges which are funded. Uh, so there is a systemic issue with matching up workload with funded positions. On top of that, Senator, and this I think gets to your question, uh, because of the pandemic and because of the modification of court operations that needed to take place, specifically suspending evidentiary hearings, which require in-person contact. There are pending 9,348 small claims cases that need to be heard, 917 other civil cases in the district division, 3,524 uh, criminal cases that need to be heard in the district division. Plus we are anticipating a large increase year over year in landlord tenant cases, uh, at least according to Judge King, uh, the administrative judge, 4,000 additional landlord tenant cases year over year as the current moratoria uh, expire. And then uh, there has been also a, a backlog of uh, domestic cases and we expect a vo increased volume of 2,000 cases year over year. So that, that is the workload that is coming to the circuit court as a function of the pandemic. And that comes on top of the systemic um, uh, mismatch between workload and the number of funded positions in that court. Thank you. Further questions? Okay, seeing, seeing none and hearing no further action, then uh, we'll thank. Would it be appropriate to amend at this time? If, if, you, if you want to do anything with items one, two, and three, now would be the time to do it. I would move to add item one. Okay, Sen Senator Guida moves uh, to adopt item one. That's the addition of two. Circuit Court judges. Is there a second? second? Second by Senator Reagan. Discussion. Senator Guida. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm not accustomed to growing budgets and increasing personnel, but 
Uh, I have constituents who are just backlogged with the courts. Uh, and if the statutory, if the formulaic number is 45 and we have 35, and we got the thousands of cases backlogged in judicial process, I think it's fair to our constituents, even if only for a couple of years to finish this, or to deal with this backlog of cases, to appropriate the funds to put these two positions in place. And that's the reason for my motion. Thank you. Further discussion? Senator Rosenwald. Just a question. Do um, retired judges, are they currently sitting on circuit court cases? Yes, Senator. Uh, the circuit court um, is able to continue to function by sort of, um, you know, um, using all available resources. So uh, if, if there are retired judges who are, who are below the mandatory constitutional age of 70, they can, under some limitations, sit in your cases. Uh, the court also relies on masters to get through the, the, um, their workload, but both of those resources are reducing. Where there are, there are judges who, uh, or retired judges and uh, retired judicial, judicial officers who have told the court that they're no longer gonna be, gonna be available, so this sort of duct tape and bail wire approach is just not sustainable and it's not gonna work. And, and uh, if I may, to Senator Guider's point, um, it, is, it is a real problem. And um, we, we certainly are hearing from your constituents about this. Um, so I, I, I hope the committee acts favorably on it. It, it is really, really important. Um, the people that we serve, that we get judicial officers there and be able to hear these cases on a timely basis. Thank you. Further discussion? I mean, I'm, I'm not familiar with the formula. Um, I will say that, uh, you know, we've dealt with formulas at the local level and determining how many police we should have in town. And it seems like the formula is, is better meant for a city than, than it is a town, because uh, it would really give us an access. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I plus I, I want to go back to, you know, my, my question to the Chief Justice before. Um, the judicial branch budget has grown considerably in the last four years. And it, it would seem so that uh, out of the $30 million in growth that they, they've had over the last four years, it seems though you should be able to find 1.3 million to uh, take care of uh, things. I would have a question, Chief Justice, is how, how big is the pool of retired judges that you can use. Well, it can't be too big. They retire at some point. They can't sit on uh, circuit court now has nine retired judges over the age of 70 serving as judicial refer referees. Um, And the age in which they can't serve was? Age 70, it's a constitutional uh, requirement. Okay, so my, my, so I'm asking, are there retired judges that you can use? Cause you, you seem to imply that there were some that are sitting now. So yes. I guess my question would be how many justices have retired that are under the age of 70 that you can use? Um, Nine retired judges over the age of 70. Now they can serve as, as, um, as referees. referees and then their decisions are reviewed by a sitting judge. Okay. Um, and then uh, 
the other the other stopgap that's been used by the circuit court over the years you know, are part time judges. And when the circuit court was created, there were in 2011, there were 29 part time judges. Today, there are six. So it is um, it's a contraction of resources since the circuit court was created. Um, that that is that is um, contributing to the problem. In, in 2011, when the circuit court was created, there were 27 full-time judges, um, five vacancies, 13 marital masters hearing family division cases, and 29 part-time job judges. Today, there are 30, um, sitting right today, there are 30 judges, there are five vacancies, um, and two marital masters. So uh, we've gone from 13 to two marital masters and from 29 part-time judges to six part-time judges. Sure. Thank you. Any further questions or discussions? Senator Guida? A question for Chief Justice. Um, something in my mind, are marital masters going away? Yes, they are, uh, Senator. Uh, when the family division was created, as I said, um, there were 13 marital masters. There are two today. No new marital masters are appointed or, or permitted. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion before us is the adoption of item one. We'll call roll, Senator Morse. No. Senator Hennessy. Senator D'Alessandro. Yes. Senator Reagan. Yes. Senator Guida? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. And the chair votes no. And the motion carries five to two. Anything else to take action on? If not, I will accept a motion for the, uh, to adopt the house figures for the judicial branch uh, with the amendments that have been passed. So moved. Moved by Senator Guider. Is there a second? Second, second by Senator D'Alessandro. Discussion? There being none, call roll. Senator Morse? No. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Reagan? Yes. Senator Guider? Yes. Senator Rosenwell? Yes. And the chair votes no. The motion carries five to two. Thank you very much, Chief Justice. Oh, and uh, Mr. Chair, we'll get you that information in writing. I appreciate the committee's time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, going on to the Department of Information Technology. Mr. Chair. Yes. Yeah, I just like to speak about the last vote we just took because we have 23 police officers being proposed in one of these budgets coming up um, that have to have in the state of New Hampshire, you know, to get up to full force, um, it's every department. And if we do this and we spend a million three, every time we're getting asked to increase things, we're gonna be over the house's budget. And I can tell you what won't fly is going over the house's budget. I mean, it's not gonna happen. And I, I just think the spend we just did was not necessary. Um, every one of us is struggling to meet our needs in our businesses and everything. And we're not increasing employees because we can't find them. And we just sp spent a million too um, because of, let's go look at the study now. Has anybody got time to go do it? I mean, that proves out that we need 45 judges. Um, I just think we gotta be very careful on how we spend money. Um, HHS is coming next week, which is gonna be extremely difficult because you've already voted on a whole bunch of it it's on the table in the Senate, and we're going to have to deal with that. And we just spent a million bucks. So I, I think we have to be very careful here um, on how we build this budget. Senator D'Alessandro. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I appreciate the words of uh, the President of the Senate. But if you can't get justice, what kind of society are we running? And we know. I know the district court in Manchester is loaded. The Superior Court, Hillsborough County North, is, is loaded. 
Uh, people need to get justice. You can't wait years for a trial. You just can't wait years. That isn't justice. And I, I think as pointed out by the Chief Justice, we are gonna get these rental cases. Once the moratorium is lifted, they're gonna be coming to our district courts looking, looking for adjudication. I mean, we, we, we can't cut justice. It doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't make sense to deny justice and to, to deny a person's ability to have a, a court appearance if that's, if that's what they, they need. I, I, I think that's a prudent expenditure. We can save in other areas, but, but I don't think you can, listen, we're, we're a country, the scales of justice are shown all the time. We, we've got to keep those, those scales of justice in place. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Senator D'Alessandro. And I, I completely agree with you. Uh, where I will respectfully disagree is that uh, I don't see us cutting anything. Uh, I've seen 30, $30.7 million increase in, in four years. Uh, so I think we have added to that. Um, when we look and uh, see that what rate people are getting for raises and uh, businesses are, uh, are struggling to make and that the, the growth out, out there is 4.3%, you're four times the amount that, that uh, uh, CPI and population growth is going. So that's, uh, that, that's, where, that's where I'm coming from. So, all right, we'll go on to the Department of Information Technology. Good afternoon. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Sorry, excuse me, Senator Guida. Yeah, I'd like to, to comment on this last discussion. Senator Guida. Thank you. As I said, I am not known for increasing budgets, but I am known for caring for my constituents. There is a tremendous backlog of court cases, and I'm hearing that from every court, from every judge, and from many of my citizens. We're here to serve those citizens. We will cut taxes, and we can afford to cut the taxes. We cannot afford to cut the budget of an essential component of life in this state and in this country, and that's the justice system. So for that reason, However, reluctantly, I think the right thing to do, while not necessarily the economic thing to do, was a tough choice to make. And I applaud my colleagues for making it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak on this so we, we can go on? Mr. Chairman, we didn't even consider raising it by one. So I, I don't think we did our homework on this one. I have no idea what's truly needed. Um, you know, could we have cut everything below four, five, six, and seven and, and not done those? I mean, if the justices were the most important part, I, I, so I don't agree. And, you know, I, I probably am one of those that could use the system just as well as anyone else in the state of New Hampshire. But, you know, I just don't know. We just approved a $1.3 million number with, I don't know, the House didn't approve it. So I don't know where we're going in the Senate, jumping that high. Um, it just doesn't, to me, no, it's not acceptable. And I just think you got to be real careful. You know, the first session we went and we increased this budget by 2.8 million. You know, what are we going to increase it by today? I mean, it's, I don't hear cuts. I don't hear any. So the, um, I don't see the need that we had to jump to two. I don't think we had to jump by any, but, you know. In any case, um, on DOIT, um, I think it's one of the budgets we should hold because I, I, I'm not sure we're going to be ready for it, but the, um, if that's where we are. Hey, there, there, it looks like there are some sections of that that we could probably address um, because they're integrated into just all the other departments. There's some areas you may want to hold on, on this. Um, do, we have, we have, do we have the department on? Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rose Curry. I'm the director of finance for uh, DOIT. Okay. The commissioner is unable to join us this afternoon. He's attending an IT council meeting, um, but I can go through all of our items answer any questions that you might have. Okay, thank you, Rose. Um, 
I think I'd like to first of all take up the uh, uh, items two, three, and four, which seem to be uh, errata changes requested by the agency. Um, those items are housekeeping items. Number two, um, we're asking for a reduction uh, within DOIT's accounting unit 7681. This was the accounting unit previously assigned to PUC and PUC and OSI are now combined into the Department of Energy. Well, so we're we asked, go we ahead. Haven't, we haven't done that yet. So, okay. so probably actually probably two and three would probably want, want to put on hold because uh, again, that talks about the Department of Energy. Yes, if the Department of Energy is not going forward, then we would um, ask to restore uh, 7681 and that OSI budget. Okay. Um, the adjust funding allocations for four shared positions. Yep, for number four, um, during the house phase of the budget, we asked for the restoration of four, uh, their shared positions, their filled positions. And number four, it just adjusts, again, it's a housekeeping item. It adjusts the funding allocation for those four positions. Okay, the housekeeping item is costing us $31,000. It is in general funds. Um, what we do is we look at every position within the DOIT budget and it's allocated out to certain agencies. And then we take a look at the agency's funding source. So what this is, when we first looked at it, we, we thought our general funds was going to be um, 15,000 less in 22 and approximately 16,000 less in 23. When we went back and looked at the allocations, we noticed that increase. So that's why we're asking for additional general funds only. But you'll see the corresponding reduction in other and federal funds. Okay, and was this presented to the house? It was not, it was after um, we asked the house to approve those the positions when we were preparing for further testimony, that's when we noticed this. And that's why we're asking now for the adjustment. And where, where, did, where does that 31,000 get offset? Um, by the other and federal funds. It's just the source okay. of funds that support those, okay, eight, got, those got positions. Does anyone wish to take any action? I'm sorry, that again? Yeah, are we able to move anything? Because yeah, of the, any. Just item by item. Senator, Senator Morse, did you wish to wait on the whole department? Well, I just think we can get through other budgets today and that's why. Okay. The, um, I, I don't, if there's no objection from anyone, I don't mind put, putting this off and we'll, we'll continue in more depth. And probably once we get through the others, we'll have a better idea of where uh, IT interacts with it too. All right, I, I guess we're gonna, Rose, I guess we're gonna put this off for today. Okay. And uh, I, I thank you for uh, coming on this afternoon though. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Department of Corrections. Gary, Gary, Senator Morse. Yes. The item number four, the um, would be that where are we funding bond hearings? Like funding somewhere else in the budget? Would be anybody out there? Yeah, there's a one million dollar appropriation for the body cam fund in House Bill Two. I'm, I'm sorry, you, you move item four with what? Move it into, you know what line it is in AC2? 143 to 144. The line 143 and 144 are going to be good. Senator Morse. 
Senator Moss moves item four. Uh, Second. Two, to uh, lines 143 and 144 in House Bill 2, as seconded by Senator Guida. Discussion, Senator Hennessy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just looking at the language in HB 2 and wondering if we need to change it to allow for a state agency to apply for these funds. So currently the uh, House Bill 2 language is limited to local law enforcement agencies for matching grants. So if uh, the intent is to allow for corrections to access this fund, we would we would make a, an amendment to this section when we get to uh, probably safety's budget when we talk about that. Thank you. So we could pass this now and then get an amendment in safety. Yeah. I, I just, Mr. Chairman, there's, there's people listening that are working on drafting HB2 as we speak, and Josh is picking up as we vote on HB2 items, they're picking it up and drafting language um, so that HB2 catches up to the floor. Uh, so I'm sure that's what they're, with the motion that I made, they'll, they'll pick this up and draft it properly. Okay, so is that as HB2 is being drafted, how many versions of that do we have so far? Because I'm looking in the introduced House Bill 2. Uh, actually, it's not the one, it's not the one amended by the House, which is probably the one I need. Senator, just question because the lines have changed. Senator, we would uh, draft amendments for separate sections. So we'll have quite a few because there's so many sections in House Bill 2. And then at the end of the process, we take everything that's been approved and string it together. Okay. Uh, one question I have for clarification on this motion is we're combining the language from number four with House Bill 2. Are we moving the dollars from number four? Yes. Thank you. Okay, any further questions? Ready for the vote? Uh, Senator Moss? Yes. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? We're, we're, we're voting on moving uh, item number four, which is the body worn, body worn cameras for corrections and probation and parole officers into line 143 and 144 in House Bill 2, which has to do with the body cameras. Yes. Senator Reagan. Thank you. Senator Guida. Yes. Senator Rosenwald. Yes. And the chair votes yes. Motion carries. Anything else, Senator Rosenwald? Thank you. I'd like to move item number one, fund the six existing unfunded teacher positions. Please. Senator Rosenwald moves item number one. Is there a second? Second. Second by Senator D'Alessandro. Discussion? Senator Rosenwald. Thank you. Um, I recently got some information from the commissioner on the number of inmates who are working on their high school diploma. And as of May 1st, just a couple of weeks ago, there were over a thousand um a thousand inmates who are seeking that and i think we should remember that these inmates are going to get out and they need to be able to find jobs and be productive returning citizens i think a good teacher can change a person's life I know not all of these positions are filled, but two of them are. If we don't fund, these positions will be reducing the educational services that people are gonna come back to our communities have access to. So 
I hope you will join me in restoring the funding for these six existing teachers. Thank you. Further discussion? Senator Hennessy. Thank you. Uh, this question is for the commissioner. Good afternoon, for the record, Helen Hanks, Commissioner of the Department of Corrections, uh, available certainly to answer questions and, and uh, first appreciate Senator Morse's motion. It was one of the items I had hoped uh, the Senate Finance would support and Senate Bill 96 was an area we tried to do that on earlier. So I really appreciate the acknowledgement. Thank, thank you, um, good to see you. I have a question for you on the education piece of things. Is there any, are there any programs where you work with the community college system or VLAX, where you wouldn't need to hire your own educators, where you could um, piggyback on either virtually um, or adjunctly through other resources the state already has? Uh, thank you, Senator Hennessy. We, we do that uh, now minus uh, VLAX. We are working toward uh, learning through reaching out to VLAX how we can use that I'll call it application technology in a correction system. Some of what we would need to accomplish as an agency is increasing our bandwidth and IT infrastructure, but we are in uh, that process and started that on the house side. I don't have any uh, finality to a phased in plan with VLAX, but the current complement of educators in our system teach across facilities uh, and work not just on the high school diploma, they work on the high set, they work on career technical education, and we currently collaborate with NHTI and other um, associates, bachelor's and master's degree programs. Thank you. Further questions? Was this presented to the house? Yes, we <clears throat> requested the house restore all funding to our existing education and vocational program. Um, at the time, uh, they moved as far as they did, uh, and certainly acknowledging that the Senate would have an opportunity to continue to look at the state's revenues and other finances to determine if the restoration of these existing positions was in that funding line. Um, I would like to add, we also run a commercial driver's license program and work on employment connectivity. These positions that are currently unfunded, we did have people resign in fear of not having a job come June 30. So two are currently filled and we would like to continue to uh, map to uh, employment opportunities that are beyond um, uh, minimum wage so that the people would uh, have more success when returned to the community. Further, further discussion. Motion before us is to fund six existing unfunded education positions. Uh, one question here. Uh, Commissioner, uh, I noticed that you, your department was up over 19% over the last four years. Where, where, where has that growth happened? Senator Daniels, I would have to do a further detailed analysis to give you a concise answer, but I can tell you that the Teamsters did negotiate a increase in their wages uh, that uh, did include double overtime after 16 hours. That did affect our class 10 lines. I am aware that our benefits um, from year to year, those have increased. Uh, we don't forecast those costs, but those have been a consistent increase in our overall budget. Our healthcare lines did go up. We are seeing some promising efforts, which is why the budget before the legislature this year sees a lower cost in our medical and pharmaceutical lines. But primarily, as we are a 75% uh, personnel-driven organization, it is our personnel. So as the state engages in incarceration, as we do across this country, we have to have the staffing resources to facilitate that. Okay, yeah. that, that, that figure does come to over $47 million. Okay, uh, any more discussion? Seeing none, uh, we'll call the vote. Senator Morse? No. Senator Hennessy? No. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Reagan? No. Senator Guida? No. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. And the chair votes no. Are there any other items to be taken up? Senator Rosenwald. Thank you. 
Um, in light of our action that we took just now, um, I'd like to recommend that we fund the two currently filled teacher positions. I, and I don't have a cost on that. Commissioner, do you have a cost on that? I don't have it right in front of me. I would certainly email that to the committee um, today. Okay. So that, that being the case, I think, you know, when, before I'd like to vote on, I'd like to hold. hold hold it and see what those figures are. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I would also like to get from the commissioner if those would be your priority positions. Thank you, Senator Hennessy. I will do that as well. Okay, assuming that your priorities are already in, in the House passed budget? My priority in the House budget was to have the whole set of services um, be funded as they had been in prior biennium years. Um, as this wasn't a new request, I was hoping we could retain our education and career and technical program across the organization. Okay, good, thank you. I'll have to reprioritize. All right, uh, seeing no more action to be taken on corrections. So thank you very much, Commissioner. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Uh, Department of Education is next. Mr. Chairman. Yes. On the Department of Corrections, I'm just curious if we could get, or LBA could get, what the vacants, what the uh, positions that are currently funded in the budget and how many vacancies we have. And if the ability to shift, you know, if we have 1,100 positions and there's 900 filled, out of those 200 positions, we can't find a way, I'm not sure what the number is, but we can't find a way to shift that funding into this funding. The answer to that is probably in the document that you folks have already sent me. We can look specifically at corrections, see how many positions are funded, and then run a current vacancy report from the pay payroll system. Um, I would ask that I work with the department to make sure that some of those positions haven't been filled. Our payroll report is about a month old because of the cycle. And I wouldn't want to run into a situation where we unfund a position with, with a person in it. Mm -hmm. So yes, we can we can answer the question. Okay. Could 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 I ask another? What about transfer authority? Yeah, the, they got to have transfer authority to do that. They have transfer authority in the budget now that allows them to move money between um, uh, personnel lines, which most agencies don't, and that allows them to utilize vacancy money to pay for overtime. Right, right. I know that. So, so they do, Mike, what you're saying to me is they do have that transfer authority now. The transfer authority is included in the budget. Right, thank you. Okay, uh, going on to the Department of Education. Mr. Chairman. Senator Morse. Can we ask LBA or the department on items four, five, six and seven are those items that can be brought to fiscal uh, <clears throat> the answer is yes they could all go to fiscal the position could be authorized the federal funds could be accepted um, i can defer to the department if they have anything to add commissioner yep so I, I'm sorry, I was getting rejoined into your thing, so I might have missed the question. I came in and I wasn't able to hear. Uh, the question was on items four, five, six, and seven. Uh, could they be brought to fiscal? And the L LBA says, yes, they could be, but uh, they, they also uh, left an opening for you to make any comments. Yep, so um, four and five, um, certainly could be six. My understanding and our understanding of how that works is um, if we need an accounting unit, it has to have a staff position assigned to it. And that only can take place through the budgeting process. And so that's why we put kind of a, 
a straw man um, in accounting unit up. Um, this is a uh, this is a change that we're wanting to make relative to um, uh, a waiver that we're applying to the federal government for to consolidate our administrative funds. Uh, we don't know if it will be allowed or not. If it's not allowed, then we won't actually be spending any of these funds, but we need to set up an accounting unit uh, to be able to um, facilitate that uh, admin consolidation if we're granted the waiver by the feds. That's why we put it in through this process. And we were under the impression that Fiscal would not be able to create the full accounting unit, including um, the position associated with that. I don't know if somebody can if somebody can clarify that. That would that was the reason why this is showing up here. Senator Hennessy. Thank you. I was just going to ask the LBA if you can set up an accounting unit without funding the position. Yes, you can establish an accounting unit unit by accepting additional federal funds in this case, and you can also under one twenty four fifteen establish the position. Follow up. Follow up. Would they be able to come to fiscal to establish an accounting unit? Yes. Thank you. Further that, so then, it, so then I could do all this via fiscal committee. Is that the conclusion? Yes. The testimony we are that when I interviewed LBA, they they said you could come to fiscal with four, five, six, and seven. So I okay. Just to clarify that. Senator um, Rosenwald. Thank you. On number seven, didn't um, didn't the department already come to fiscal with the grant for this year with the request and the understanding based on current you know past practice that you accept a, a federal grant in the current year and then the succeeding years go into the budget. And this, that was our understanding as we accepted the first pot of money in fiscal. I guess uh, it's really a question for the LBA. That's correct. So the department did come to fiscal recently on the system of care grant to bring the amount up close to $3 million. Uh, currently in the house pass budget, it is closer to about two and a half million. And this amendment on line seven would bring it up to the anticipated um, total amount. Uh, that could be in House Bill 1, and they could also come into fiscal next by NM as they did in this current fiscal year too. Either way would mechanically work. Thank you. Senator Moss. Um, I was just gonna move item number three. Okay, let's finish up with four through seven. Senator Hennessy. Okay, let, let's bring, uh, since Senator Reagan isn't here right now, um, why don't we recognize Senator uh, Moss to, for, uh, to talk about item three? Oh, they, I think the testimony we heard when they were presenting was they tried to put this position out um, at the current pay grade and it didn't draw anyone. And this is the pay grade they believe they have to be at to. Uh, to get a candidate. That's, that's correct. And the only, there's a technical problem on this um, item. It says administrator one, it was an administrator two to an administrator three, so. LBA, did you get that? Uh, could the commissioner repeat that? I'm sorry. Sure, on item one, it says request an increase um, budgeted administrator one position to administrator three. It's actually going from administrator two to administrator three, I believe. And Tammy's probably online and can clarify that if I have made an error, but I believe so. Uh, no, I think that's correct. And I think the dollars do represent the administrator two to three change. Thank you. Second. Um, I, don't, I don't know if Senator Reagan has left or who's left for the day, thank you. Um, all right, so let, let's go back to, uh, I think there was a motion by Senator Morse uh, to approve items four through seven. Do you want to amend that to go three? No, I was, I was no. suggesting four to through seven. Oh, 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 I'm item sorry, three, yes. Item yes. three, I would. Four through four. seven will be taken care of by fiscal, through fiscal. So Senator Morse is moving item three Second. And that's seconded by Senator Guida. Discussion? 
there being none, uh, call roll, Senator Morse. Yes. Senator Hennessy. Yes. Senator D'Alessandro. Yes. Senator Guida. Yes. Senator Rosenwald. Yes. Chair votes yes. Item number three has been accepted. Senator Morse, can I, uh, or Senator Daniels, may I ask one more thing? Um, I'm, and Tammy's online. I don't know if, if she can be brought into the meeting. She sent me a text. So, and I just want to clarify relative to um, item number uh, six, are we able in fiscal to create class 10? Because that would be needed for that budget. To establish a position through fiscal committee, it would go into a class 59 full-time temporary position. And then in the next budget, it would be requested as a conversion to make it a permanent position. So, so in fact, what, what, so Tammy, and I see Tammy's online. Tammy, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, so what we would hope to do is take some permanent positions that we currently have now that are already funded with these federal funds. And by creating this accounting unit, we would be consolidating our admin funds that are federal funds. And we would be moving those administrative positions into this consolidated accounting unit. And the only way that we can move those classified positions is to have a class 10 already established, which is why we were bringing it before the budget. What would happen would be if we were to, this was just to establish the budget for now. And then if we actually were able to do this consolidation, we would then be becoming before the fiscal committee to increase the dollar amount by that consolidated amount and to move those positions into that account. So it's not a new position? Correct, we're not asking for a new position. We're really just trying to create an accounting unit as a placeholder so that if we get the federal waiver approval to do consolidated admin, we would have an accounting unit that would facilitate our ability to do that. So we do not need a new position. <coughs> So if it's not a new position, it's an existing position, then Tammy is correct that you couldn't establish a class 10 through fiscal committee. That is it, it could not. Correct. Okay. It, it, Mr. Chair, could I ask a question of the department? Tammy, did, did I miss a, a reduction or a move from the existing class 10? Because I think the request we got was only to make an ad there was no offsetting reduction elsewhere in a class 10. Um, so what I did was I did move a position from a currently title funded accounting unit into this new one. Maybe I didn't relay that to you correctly. Uh, uh, I'd have to look to see what I did. Can, can I have like five minutes? Sure. Well, two minutes, you know, well, you know. Uh, Senator Hennessy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to, I'm working on an amendment based on a bill that this committee approved this week, HB, I believe it was 242, the language in. I'm, I'm just working on an amendment. It's Somewhat similar, I don't know what the numbers will be, but it's somewhat similar to number nine. So I'd hope that we would hold off on that until I have the amendment. And it would also incorporate SB 135. And I would also need to talk with ways and means to find out what the estimated trust fund balance would actually be. Okay. So it might not be on Monday. So if we're, if we're going to put a hold uh, on this, then uh, Tammy, that gives you plenty of time. You have more than five minutes. Well, I have the answer. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, if Mickey's listening in still, so what I did was I took a position that was in our accounting unit for 21st century, and I moved it from that accounting unit into this consolidated accounting unit. So. Um, essentially, that accounting unit would be reduced by the salary and benefits for that position number, which I can provide to Mickey. Yeah. 
Okay, so with all with all that, yeah, I believe what the commissioner was saying is he felt that they needed to uh, that we needed to vote uh, this in to allow the creation of that class ten. Yeah, if there is a reduction in another accounting unit, then this line here would probably net to close to zero in this case. So it's presented right now on this uh, recap as an additional federal appropriation added. So I think if there is going to be a, a position swap from another accounting unit, you could approve this and it would have a, a close to a net zero uh, impact on your total budget. Okay. Everyone get that? Yeah, I They'll give us a new sheet, I would think, on Monday, and it'll have. We, so we, shall we wait till Monday, and we'll, we, get, we'll get all the language so that yep. we uh, we understand clearly what's going on. Okay. All right. Uh, anything? Any other information that we need to get from LBA on on the next sheet? Okay. Not seeing any. We'll, we'll go on. Thank you very much, folks. Department of Environmental Services. Jim. Senator Morris. Item number one, um, state aid grants. Um, the House removed this from the budget. Um, I would propose that, and they've come over and asked us to restore it. Um, I would propose that we fund this out of 2021, um, the $15 million. 15 even or the-, the Well, the, the item's printed here. It's, okay, it's, very good. All right, so uh, Senator Morse moves item number one, but instead of being funded in 2022 and 2023, that the, uh, it, it it'd be funded out of 21. Second. That's seconded by Senator Rosenwald. Any discussion? There being none, call roll. Senator Morse? Yes. Senator Hennessy? Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Guida? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. And the chair votes yes, motion carries. Okay. Uh, So the the uh, the notation there any is, is that there any application of that when we're funding it from the 2021 it says the funding approved above section 62 of House Bill two yeah this this will all get drafted I mean asking LBA now this will all get drafted and end up in HB two okay. so you'll see this appropriation in HB two and it'll refer back to 2021 as the funding source, so. Okay. We, we have that, um, that's referred to on the bottom of the page and the amendment itself is on page 16. And that amendment does just what Senator Morse described. Okay, so in effect, what we have just passed Correct. It is Amendment 1473S. Yeah, I'm not real good at that. You're going to look at HB2 in full anyway, so all these amendments will be right behind it. It is. Anything else from uh, the list that anyone wishes to take up? I, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to discuss them anyways. Item two, three, six. Um, the, uh, they look to me like we should be funding them, but if maybe you want to hear from the department, so. Okay. And we have some, have Commissioner Scott on. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair and uh, members of the committee, uh, Bob Scott, the Department of Environmental Services. So. Item two is for a mercury analyzer. Uh, as we discussed at the original budget presentation, uh, a lot of our water bodies in the state are uh, mercury impaired. Uh, the analyzer we have is uh, 
basically at a state now we can't even get parts for it. So we we have 30 years of uh, a data record, uh, and we'd like to be able to maintain that record as we move forward, especially since we have so many mercury advisories in place. That's really the only way we will ever get to a point where we can lift those. Uh, item three, uh, which was the, uh, the CERCLA uh, maintenance. Uh, and, and again, this has to, has to do with the with Superfund sites in our obligations, uh, we're required to pay 100% of the environmental ma maintenance and uh, environmental costs for these uh, older Superfund sites. So this would fund uh, work at the Keefe site uh, for a building demolition, a, a Kearsarge site for monitoring and the Savage Well site uh, for monitoring. And Senator, I didn't pick up the third item you wanted to discuss. Item number six. And that's the uh, Lake restoration funds. So we, we have uh, in the past gotten a general fund uh, injection, if you will, of uh, funds into that uh, in invasive aquatic weeds uh, program to help towns eradicate infestations. Uh, again, uh, it's, it's an ongoing problem throughout the states, uh, uh, you know, invasive aquatic weeds, uh, milfoil, that type of uh, problem we have in our lakes. So that this would help uh, with those programs. Thank you. I, are you um, are you aware of why the House did not accept these? Uh, not explicitly. The general, my understanding, generally from the discussions that we've had, it wasn't lack of support. It was at the time the the revenue projections. They had to work with the revenue projections that they were presented, and and you know, they had to make some hard decisions. Okay, and within within your budget, uh, you cannot find find the uh, funds for some of these these items because I noted that uh, you know, your budget is up over forty percent over the last four years. Some You're right. Go ahead, Senator. So, sorry, I was going to say over over one hundred and forty three million. So, so much of our growth in our budget, uh, just to remind the senators, uh, in, re in recent uh, biennials, we've added the Drinking Water Groundwater Trust Fund. Uh, we've added the uh, PFAS Loan Fund, uh, if, if you remember that we were given bonding authority uh, last biennium for $50 million. Uh, so th those type of uh, new ded dedicated fund programs have expanded our budget, uh, uh, among other things. Uh, so it, it, to answer your question more explicitly, could we find other funds? Uh, an example would be the aquatic, uh, invasive aquatic weed program. We do have some funds for that. This was additional funding to help kind of move the dial on that, if you will. So, so it's, uh, you know, these, these funds are, are helping uh, the, the programs uh, more than we would have been able to normally fund. Wasn't the aquatic fund supposed to be self-funding? Right, and again, uh, the, the, the program would continue without this extra additional influx, but it, it would not continue at the same same size and scale. Okay, any further questions? Any, any action on anything? A question, Mr. Chairman. Senator D'Alessandro. The, 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 the mercury analyzer. Is is the is the item that they have in place now no longer usable? And and what's happening as a result of that? If I could, Senator. So so yes. Yeah, so the, so the existing analyzer is of an age now. We can't we can't get replacement parts. So it's my understanding is it's still operational. But if if we don't replace it, it won't be. I, I, I can't tell you exactly when it's going to break hard and we won't be able to fix it, but we're getting to that point. And, and further question? Further question. And was that was asked was that asked for in the house phase of the budget? That was part part of a it, it was embedded in a, a a few things, but bottom line, yes, it was, I believe. And uh, I have my chief operating officer, Sue Carlson, uh, is also available. So sweet Sue, sweet Sue, where is she? <laughs> so hopefully she'll uh 
bail me out if I got that wrong. But my 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 recollection was yes, that was part of the original ask, but it was it was not explicit just that item. Senator D'Alessandro, yes, it was actually part of a capital budget request item that we had had that um, was not approved. We asked for it in the House phase and we are asking for it in the Senate phase so that um, we can um, get this very old piece of equipment replaced. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And in the capital budget, isn't, isn't there a $75,000 threshold? No, sir, it's a $50,000 threshold. 50, okay, 50. 50, thank you. And, you know, rec recognizing the need for this, um, you know, it, it just, I, I find it hard to believe that uh, out of $497 million, you can't find 55,000. Senator, um, may I? What is happening is these items um, can only be bought with our general funds. And our general funds are quite limited. We do have a, a bigger budget, but unfortunately, most of these funds are dedicated for very specific purposes, like the trust fund or the PFAS fund or MTBE. And the use of those funds are closely monitored to ensure that we only spend it on things that are related to those programs. So we are, we are limited into the flexibility of using those funds for things like replacing the mercury analyzer. Okay, thank you. Um, Senator Guida. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple of questions. Uh, item seven, I see state air permits being shifted from other to general fund to the tune of a million dollars. What caused that shift and is it necessary? Well, thank you, Senator. So uh, again, what the, this is uh, funding meant to, and it's in the current uh, biennium we're, we're in has, has funds to do the same things. The, the general fund uh, infusion, it was meant to uh, help mitigate the amount of uh, fee, the cost per ton, if you will, for uh, emissions fee uh, that that's needed. So. Uh, this this five hundred thousand dollars per per year would would eliminate the need to raise the per ton fee by uh, seventy one dollars. Uh, so there there are emission based fees they are paid. Uh, this is just basically to help offset uh, the cost to the regulated community. Follow up. Yeah. So um, I, I worked with the director of the air division a few years back to change the, the fee structure. What's the status of that fee structure at this time, Bob? Can you, um, and I'm concerned that we're, the general fund shouldn't continue to fund that. It was meant as a one-time help to transition, not to become a permanent fixture on the general fund, so. Sure, thank you, Senator. So, so I'll, first of all, I'll comment that the, the, the work you all did, I think was was very helpful. We, we in that iteration, we went from, uh, more traditional, if you will, the national ambient air quality standards, SOX, NOx, particular matter that the, the more traditional pollutants cost per ton. The problem, as I'm sure you know, Senator, is as we move forward, uh, the things that are regulated uh, for air emissions are, it's really not tons anymore. And sometimes the, depending, uh, it can be very small amounts, but yet it drives a large amount of work. So uh, the work that was done, I would, I would argue is probably uh, a interim. Uh, so, for example, uh, the our, our understanding right now is our current fee rate is you know today is around two hundred eighty eight dollars per ton. Uh, we're expecting closer to three hundred twenty five dollars per ton next year as our base. Based uh, assuming this uh, things move forward as we expect. And most of that is due to uh, the uh, power plants, uh, the, the reduced emissions from the power plants. So, uh, to, so a, a long answer to say, I think there's probably another another iteration uh, will be needed to look at uh, the work that is being driven less than uh, per, by these emissions, less than the amount, less so the amount of emissions, if that makes sense. Follow up. Follow up. So, with the reduction in the number of emitters. Would that not necessitate or facilitate a reduction in the number of inspectors, the number of personnel? 
I would love to believe that the, the problem is Senator, uh, the, the regular, I'll give it an example, uh, PFAS, right? So we have something that's, when we hit groundwater, we're, we're, we're talking uh, parts per trillion, the air emissions that, you know, we, we've now seen have caused some of those issues are, we're, we're talking pounds. Uh, so, but it drives a huge amount of workload. Uh, we have many examples of that type of thing, whether it's air toxics, et cetera. So the, the problem is the science, uh, the science progresses, we're finding our workload is not in decreasing, even though uh, the amount, come, uh, the, the mass coming out of stacks uh, is decreasing, which is a great thing, don't misunderstand me, but we, we I think another iteration eventually of those, the, that fee structure, structure is gonna have to change to reflect that. So short answer is no, we're not seeing the workload uh, be reduced because of that. Other questions, Senator Moss. Senator Moss is moving items two, three, and six. Is there a second? I would second it. Second by Senator D'Alessandro. Discussion? Further discussion? Seeing none, we'll call roll. Senator Morse? Yes. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Guida? Yes. Senator Rosenwell? Yes. And the chair votes no. And the, the motion carries five to one. Anything further on the uh, items one through nine? Senator Guida. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, if the department could address the administration support part-time from general and part-time from other, what is that position for? Thank you, Senator. So, so uh, we act, currently have a fair backlog of, uh, yeah, well, I'll back up. As you're well aware, uh, everybody needs computers, computers, computer equipment uh, in order to work in today's environment. So we have a, an ongoing uh, schedule to replace those as they get antiquated and, and, and less useful and so to keep our staff uh, efficient. Uh, and that's, that's ongoing. Uh, the problem we've had is, is we have a backlog of being able to get those monitors and computers and other uh, peripherals uh, deployed uh, to to the staff, so they have to be uh, set up uh, as far as all the computer programs, et cetera. So, uh, what we're asking for is is a, a position, a part time position, which is funded out of these two two uh, funds, uh, to be able to keep that moving ahead, keep our staff set up that way, and hopefully not have have this backlog being on an ongoing uh, issue. I don't know if the I don't know if Sue Carlson wants to add to that. I know she came on the screen, so. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Senator, um, just so you understand, um, the funding is split because the account that this position would be paid out of is a mixed funding account. So okay. it's I, couldn't, a, I couldn't understand, I'm sorry, I couldn't understand. I said, the reason you're seeing two funding lines for this one position is because the accounting unit that this position would be funded out of is a mixed funding account. So it's a 47-53 split funding. That's why you're seeing two lines on there. Senator Gata, is there any reason that it couldn't be fully funded out of other? Actually, no, it could be fully funded out of other. Further discussion? Seeing none, um, I know that we had already accepted uh, 
Amendment 1473. Senator Rosenwald, to New York, that was the same? It's basically the same Same, thing, okay. So that, it it looked like it, it was. I, might have been a little more specific. Um, okay, so any more, any other action on environmental services? Seeing none, is there a motion to accept uh, the House figures on environmental services with the um, amendments? Yes, I'll move that. Okay, that's moved by Senator Rosenwald. Is there a second? Senator second. D'Alessandro. Any discussion? Okay, well, uh, motion on before us is the House figures with the amendments that we have passed. No, she left that to you. I let you do that. <laughs> That's in your court. That's in your court. Okay. You go, you go Seeing no, no further discussion, we'll call roll. Senator Morse? Yes. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Guida? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, I think... I think we're going to call it a day at that. Um, Just briefly. Uh, we, we still have left the Department of Energy, which uh, we, we have to have a discussion on whether we will create uh, that or not. Office of Strategic Planning, Public Utilities Commission, University, and the Community College System. Those are all things that they're talking about merging together in, in various forms. So uh, with that, uh, we, we'll, we'll take up that, uh, probably start with that on Monday and then go into Health and Human Services uh, from there. <laughs> Starting at 7 p.m., going to 7 a.m., yes. Uh, no, I think we are meeting at one o'clock, I believe on, on Monday. Not 8 a.m. on Wednesday. Um, we, we do have an amendment that uh, came out from the governor's office uh, that was sent out to you. It is in the OneDrive. They've got it now. Uh, I can make sure that uh, Matt Malo from the governor's office is here and uh, maybe we can find an energy expert between now and then too. Uh, okay, I would agree. So uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Moved by Senator D'Alessandro, seconded by yes. Senator Hennessy, Senator Morse, yes. Senator Rosenwald, yes. Senator Guida, yes. Senator D'Alessandro, yes. Senator Hennessy, chair votes yes, and we are adjourned and we thank, thank the public for being with us and uh, we'll see you on Monday. <laughs>